All right, so yesterday I was playing basketball at the rec center. Um, you know, brick and wide open layups. You know how you know how I, you know how I do. And uh, and this guy I was hooping with. When I pulled up, he goes, "Hey, didn't you used to make bracket videos? I kind of recognize you." I was like, "Yeah, man, I still do." He's like, "Oh, really? You still do? Oh, that's great." But then I realized I've been lacking on the bracketologies. I've been lacking. I've really been lacking. Um, normally, when January turns, I've been doing it more often, but I haven't. I haven't done one in like three weeks. So I'm gonna try my best to get one per week until Selection Sunday. I'm gonna try my best. Here is my first step in doing that. We have a huge update. Huge update. Um, a ton of teams moving around. Um, the top four is chaos. I have no idea who's good. No, Really, no one has any idea who's good in college basketball. No one has any idea. Um, I feel like anyone seeds like one through six could win the national title. I'm not even kidding. Um, but... Let's go over what we have here. What, who are the one seeds? I have Purdue as the number one overall seed. Now, here's the thing. If you ask me, do Quincy, does that mean you think Purdue's the best team in the country? I really don't. I really don't think Purdue's the best team in the country. But they're 19-1. and one. They're fourth in the net. They're 7-1 they're and one against quad one. They're 2-0 and oh against quad two, 6-0 and oh against quad three. I mean, they deserve the number one ranking. They have one loss, and they play in the best conference. So, like, I think there are teams better, but you can't argue for anyone else to be ranked number one. You just, you can't. Any any argument you throw out is just, is just not a good enough argument, in my opinion. Um, so, I have Purdue as uh, the number one overall seed. Um, number two overall seed, also number one seed, I have Tennessee. I think Tennessee's the next best team after Purdue. I think they've been playing with the next best team. Um, they did lose to Kentucky, which is not a very good game since Kentucky's not looking that great. But they're still 17, or 16 and three. They're still really good. They have some great wins. They're still a great team. They score a lot of points, and uh, they don't allow a lot of points. That's what you basically have to do to win games. Alabama, another SEC team. Now I'm pretty sure Tennessee and Alabama are gonna play. Yeah. Uh, February 15th, Alabama plays Tennessee in basketball. It might be an even bigger game than Tennessee-Alabama football. Maybe. So I have them at the ones of, at the other one seed. I mean, they've only lost two games all year. Um, that being to UConn real early in the year. And then who else did they lose to? They lost to Gonzaga also real early in the year. They haven't lost since, uh, since December 17th. It's been over a month. It's been a month and a week. Uh, since they've uh, they've lost a game and they've beaten some good teams like Mississippi State and Kentucky and Arkansas, uh, so and Missouri, so Missouri kind of fell off the face of the earth. Had them at a three seed, they are nowhere near that. And Kansas State is my last one seed. Kansas State started off the year really well, but they hadn't really played anyone. That like they lost to Butler earlier in the year. Um, then they would they be? They beat Nevada, who's been playing better. They're in the bracket actually. Oh, they beat Wichita State by five. Good for them. They beat Nebraska. Good for them. They beat West Virginia in overtime. Then they got ranked. Okay. Um, then they blew. The, they put up 116 on Texas on the road. Took down Baylor in overtime. Took down Oklahoma State. Dropped a game to TCU. And then proceeded to beat Kansas in overtime and beat Texas Tech. They are 17 and two. And at a top of the Big 12, they are looking amazing. Keontae Johnson um, and all of his role players around him are playing very, very well. They play as a team, and uh, they're, a, they're a hard team to beat. Kansas State, one seed. I did not even have them in the bracket last time before. I had them at like a six or something. They are on a tear, man. They're on a tear. 17-2. and two. They're fifth in the AP. They will take on Iowa State tonight. Those are my one seeds. Two seeds. Kansas, uh, still a good team. Uh, th they did lose to, in my defense, I made I made this bracket before they lost to Baylor. So, I, I'm just going to keep them at a two. They're still a really good team at 16-3, and three, or now what, 16-4. They're still really good. Um, Arizona, 
Arizona was lacking a little bit. They were a one seed, and then they lost to Washington State and Oregon. But they did turn around and beat UCLA. They're 17-3. and three. Two seed is fair. They're still a good team. They lost two tough road games. So be it. Houston. I really thought about dropping Houston to a three or even a four. They're a third in the AP. I really don't know why. I said Houston was the best team coming into the year because I thought they were the best team coming in the year. And they beat up on a bunch of nobodies. They beat St. Mary's, a good win. They lost to Alabama at home. Okay. Beat Virginia on the road. That was a great win. And they proceeded to play in their meh conference. And they lost to Temple at home. When was the last time Temple beat the number one team in the country? I'm betting never. I don't know. I'm not impressed with Houston. They're still 18-2, and two, so I haven't met a two-seed. I don't think they're one-seed caliber, though. I don't think they're one-seed caliber. Um, two-seed. Now, UCLA. I was all set to put UCLA at, on the one line. Uh, but they did lose at Arizona. But before that, they have been playing well. They beat Washington, USC, Utah, UCLA, Arizona State. Uh, beat Washington State. They beat Kentucky earlier. They had been on a, they had been on a roll. They had been on a roll. Uh, they did drop the game to Arizona. Those are the two best teams of the Big 12. I'm not sure who I think is better. Um, if I had to pick who I thought was better, I think I would say UCLA. I know Arizona just beat them. It was a road game for UCLA. I, I think UCLA is a better team. I'm not – I don't know. It's it, That was a great game, defensive style game. Both teams under 60 points. Uh, great defense from them. Three seeds. Um, okay, we have Virginia still playing really well. Um, they've won some games in a row. They beat Wake Forest, Virginia Tech, Florida State, UNC, Syracuse. They lost to Pitt on the 3rd of January, but they've been rebounding since then. Um, won seven in a row. Um, only loss really is to Houston. I mean, they, they, they're a real good team, Virginia. Uh, Texas. Still 16-3, and three, still a really good team. I know they just lost to Iowa State. That was a real good win for Iowa State. Statement win for Iowa State. Um, they have wins over TCU. Um, and their interim head coach looks like he's doing an, an all right job. So Texas, still a really good team. Old, experienced team. TCU. I've been impressed with TCU. They beat Baylor on the road, lost to Iowa State, lost to Texas, but then beat Kansas State, lost to West Virginia, and then throttled. Kansas at Kansas throttled them 83 60 when was the last time you saw Kansas lose that badly at home I can't really remember the last time I saw Kansas lose that badly at home I really can't um, Kansas is currently right in the middle of the pack for the big deal. Kansas State Iowa State Texas Baylor Kansas TCU all seeds one through three or the guy of Iowa State at a four but those are some great teams they're going to be fighting it out almost every day in the Big 12. That's going to be fun to watch. Um, and then Miami. I think people are disrespecting Miami. They're at 20 in the AP. But they're 15-4. and four. They have some good wins. They almost beat Duke at Duke. A game they actually really should have won coming down to the wire. They kind of blew it at the end. I mean, they're whooping the hell out of Florida State right now. Um, they have a win over Virginia. I mean... They, they're a really good team. I'm kind of way high on Miami as compared to other people. I think they're a really good team. Miami three seed. Four seeds. I promise I'm not going to bore you all to death. I'll do one through five. How about that? I'll do one through five, and then I'll just talk about, like, random stuff. Four seeds. Baylor. Baylor was kind of not playing very well. Lost to TCU, lost to Kansas State. But they've rebounded. They've, they're they're kind of hot right now. Um, they beat West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and beat uh, they beat Kansas last night. And then they got Arkansas coming out of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. So Baylor's playing a lot better. Still a really good team. Adam Flagler, LJ Cryer, some great players. Um, Iowa State. Like I said, I have no idea whether or not Iowa State's good or not every single year. This year, though, it's trending towards they're a good team. They have wins over UNC. They have a win over UNC. They have a win over. They have two wins over Baylor, I think. Um, they no, they have one win over Baylor. They beat TCU. I mean, they've been holding their own with all the powerhouses in the Big Twelve. 
I mean, four seeds would have been perfectly fair for, for Iowa State. Xavier. Now, Xavier lost. Uh, uh, they had a really hard out-of-conference schedule and lost some games early in the year. They lost to IU. Uh, they lost to Duke. They lost to Gonzaga. They had three losses. And then they just started rattling off wins. They, um, in the month of December, beat West Virginia, Cincinnati, Southern, Georgetown, Seton Hall, St. John's, and then beat number two UConn at home. And then in January, they weren't slowing down. They beat Villanova. They beat Xavier. They beat Marquette. And then they lost at DePaul, 73-72. DePaul is a losing record. I was none too impressed with Xavier after that game. They were trending towards a two seed with how well they were playing and just ripping teams in the Big East. That loss brought them down to a four seed. But I'm, I'm still impressed with the way Xavier's been playing. Still a very good team. The aforementioned UConn. How the mighty have fallen. I had them as the number one overall seed. Number one overall seed. Then they lost to Xavier. Okay. So, so okay. Top 20 team on the road. What are you going to do? Then they lost to Provos. And then they lost to Marquette. And then they lost to St. John's. And then they lost to Seton Hall. A four seed might even be generous, if I'm being completely honest. UConn had a rough... A rough stretch. The Big East standings, UConn is 5-5. Five and five. I don't know. Am I being too generous to UConn? Let me know. Because there are some Big East teams that I have much lower. Um, yeah, I might be giving UConn too much benefit of the doubt. Um, we'll see. Five seeds. St. Mary's. Still, I mean, they're playing well. They beat... A team called Academy of Art. I'm not kidding. Look that up. They beat Portland by 42, which is significant because Michigan State beat them by one. They beat San Francisco. Good team. Um, they are not struggling in the West Coast Conference like, uh, well, their other West Coast counterpart. Um, the only losses really are to Houston, really. They have one over San Diego State that looks really nice. I mean, they've been playing really well. They've been playing some great ball. Great defensive team. IU. You might think five is a little high for IU, considering they lost three games they really should not have lost. They lost to Iowa. I was at that game. Blew a 21-point lead. They lost to Penn State and Northwestern. But then they rattled off three wins against Wisconsin, Michigan State, Illinois. Three, at least, if maybe not top 25, at least three top 30 teams. At least three top 30 teams. And they won them all by double digits. They stomped three really good Big Ten teams in a row. They're finally figuring out how to play with players hurt. They are becoming a really good team. They're hot right now. I think a five seed's totally fair. I think a five seed's totally fair. Who else do we have on the five line? Gonzaga. Gonzaga. They have been not ripping through their conference like they normally do. I will say, the West Coast Conference has been getting better. The West Coast Conference used to be like the worst conference there ever was. They actually have some not terrible teams in there. But like, okay, in December, after they had the win over Alabama, that was a great win. I mean, okay, they beat, like, listen to how their January has gone. They almost lost to San Francisco. Beat San Francisco by two on the road. San Francisco was a tournament team last year. They beat Santa Clara by five. Okay. They beat BYU by one. Okay, that was a great game. I don't know if any of y'all watched that game. That was a great game, that BYU-Gonzaga game. Um, BYU was winning all throughout the second half. Gonzaga came back, won it. Great game. Beat Portland. And then they lost at home to Loyola Marymount. That's pretty embarrassing. Losing to, Lo to Loyola Marymount at home. At ho Loyola Marymount hadn't beaten them since 1991. I don't know about Gonzaga, man. I don't know. I think when they are on their game, there are going to be very few teams that can beat them. 
But if they're not on their game, anyone in this bracket can beat them. I'm sorry. Um, if Loyola Marymount can beat them, not uh, not looking good. Not looking good for uh, for the Zags. Um, Auburn, they've just kind of been doing their thing. Um, I'm going to just get to the bracket, and then we can talk about teams as we go. Purdue Longwood. I'll take Purdue. Uh, Missouri, New Mexico. New Mexico undefeated to start the year. They lost some games. They lost at Nevada last night. Um, I think Missouri would be a more battle-tested team in the regular season. Um, so I'm going to take them. St. Mary's, Northwestern. Northwestern hanging on to a bit in the Big Ten. I'm going to take St. Mary's. Baylor, UMass Lowell. I'm definitely taking Baylor. They're really good. Marquette. Fun fact about Marquette, they're actually the number one ranked offensive team in the country, according to Ken Palm. They have the best offensive rating. Um, I forgot to switch. This is supposed to be Penn State. Penn State. Think about Penn State. Penn State, when they played IU, they only shot threes. I think I saw that like they had 60 of their points came from the three. Like You think you think I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm really not kidding. They only shoot the three. Um... They could get hot and beat a team, but if they're not shooting the three well, they're they're basically done for. So uh, I'm gonna take them there. Virginia and uh, Southern Miss. I will be taking Virginia. Um, I hate. Okay, my computer is glitching to hell and back. I'm sorry. Michigan State Charleston. Ooh, Charleston's ranked. They've won 20 games in a row. They're 21 and one. Now, I would like to rank them at like a five seed since they're ranked. That's about average where they should be. But like, they play in the Colonial. I can totally see them putting a Colonial team at like a 10 seed. Against Michigan State? Mm, I don't know. Michigan State did not look great when they played IU when I saw them in person. I don't know. Charleston's won that many games in a row for a reason. I, I, I feel like I got to take them. So, uh, give me, give me Charleston. Kansas and UC Santa Barbara, I will be taking Kansas, um, definitely. Alabama, Norfolk State, I'm going to take Bama. Boise State and Wake Forest. Wake Forest has been playing better in the ACC. They beat Duke. They beat some good teams. Um, I, I'm i going to take Wake Forest. They've been, they've been playing really well in the ACC. Auburn and the winner of Pitt and Ohio State. I'm, I'm not a big believer in Auburn. They're 16 and 3, which is a good record. But they haven't really performed against the top teams. I mean, they have a loss against Georgia, not a great loss. They lost to USC. They lost to Memphis. And their out of conference schedule was was very weak. Very weak. Um, I'm not a big believer in Auburn. And Pitt and Ohio State, those are two teams where like if they get hot, they can beat you. But they need they need to get hot. I don't know. This is a tough one. I think Pitt and Ohio State are two teams where they have the potential to be very good, but they're just inconsistent. And they're going to need to get a little bit more consistent if they want to make the tournament. Like, Pitt has some good wins. They beat UNC. They beat Virginia. And then they have some head-scratching losses like to Florida State. So, I'm going to take them. UConn. All right. I'm just going to take Iona just because UConn has been playing horribly. They just have not been playing well. They honestly have been playing worse than a, than a four seed. Um, and Iona, Rick Patino coach. I mean, they've been they've been playing well. They've uh, they're playing inspired right now. I'm gonna take Arkansas. What happened, y'all? What happened? They I had I had a, I was very skeptical of Arkansas in the preseason because they had a lot of freshmen. Um, but they've just not been playing well. They just haven't. Um, I I, I guess it's just too many. I don't know. I just they just haven't been playing well. I gotta find where, like they're two and five in the SEC. They're teetering on the edge of a bid. They're currently kicking the shit out of LSU right now, so that's a good start. But like they lost to Vandy, they lost to Mizzou, they lost to Alabama, uh, they lost to LSU earlier in the year. They're beating them now. They lost to LSU earlier. They had the potential to be really good. I'm not seeing it right now. Providence is a, is a pretty steady and strong team in the Big East. I'm gonna take them. I will be taking Miami over Cornell. Y'all have heard me talk about how much I trust Miami. Duke and San Diego State. Hmm. Duke? I don't know about Duke. They've, they're kind of in the... 
I don't know. They're kind of in the. They're kind of in the in the Arkansas boat. It's like they're a good team, but like they haven't been playing like it. Like, I don't know. They're Duke is five and four in the ACC. I mean, they lost to Clemson, they lost to Virginia Tech, they lost to NC State, but they have wins over teams like Pitt. They did beat Miami. Um, they have wins over, like, an Iowa. Like, I don't know. Very fickle team. I'm going to take them over San Diego State just because they're still Duke and they're still good, but I don't know. Definitely taking UCLA over Montana State. Uh, easy. UCLA, I'm real high on UCLA. Other side, I'll take Tennessee over this play-in. Illinois and Kentucky. I'm watching Illinois right now against Ohio State, and they are kicking the living shit out of them. It's 48-35. Um, Kentucky. They've not. I, I don't know. I don't know about Kentucky, man. I I I just don't know about them. They they have. They're also like Duke. Like they have losses to like not great teams, but like. They have they're four and three in the SEC. Like they lost to South Carolina at home, but they beat Tennessee the next game. They have a win over Michigan. They lost to UCLA. They lost to Missouri. They, uh, I don't know. They lost to Michigan State. They lost to Gonzaga. I don't know. They just haven't been playing great against against the top teams. They just they just haven't been. Um, what their record against the quad one one and five. But Illinois. Uh, Illinois is two and four against Quad One. I guess I'll take Illinois. Um, IU USC. I am going to uh, to be taking IU. I think IU is definitely the most well-rounded team in the Big Ten. And uh, dare I say, here's the thing. Like, okay, they lost all those games, but they did have players hurt. When I don't think IU has lost fully while fully healthy. While fully healthy, I don't think IU's lost. And the guys that are starting to get more playing time, like Geronimo and Malik Renu and Galloway and Tamar Bates, with players with Race Thompson and Xavier Johnson hurt, they've been starting to pick up the slack. And honestly, some of those guys I think should have been starting the whole year. They're starting to pick up the slack, and they're starting to really come together as a team. I've seen more IU basketball than any other team, and I'm telling you they're looking good. I'm taking Iowa State over Samford. Sanford's been playing really well. 8 no in conference play. Don't don't mark out Sanford. Rutgers and Memphis. Rutgers has a lot of potential. Rutgers has a winning record against Quad 1, which a lot of teams around them do not have. Like, Miami has a winning record against Quad 1, but, like, Duke doesn't. St. Mary's doesn't. Auburn Auburn is 2-2. Two and two. Indiana doesn't. Um, UNC doesn't. It's really hard to have a winning record against Quad 1. And Rutgers has that. Like, obviously, like, the top, top, ranked teams like Kansas State's 5-1 and one against Quad 1. Uh, the best team, the highest ranked team that has a losing record against the Quad 1 is, I don't know, but I mean, they're a good team. Um, they're really good on defense. Their offense is not great, but they're really good on defense. Um, I did see a, a thing from March Madness Analysis. It's a great college basketball page on Instagram. You should definitely follow them. Um, He put up a thing that was like teams I don't trust in March Madness, which is basically they're really high ranked in one category and really low ranked in another. Like, listen to this. Gonzaga, like, it has 16 teams that he doesn't trust in March. Gonzaga, 69th in defense. Iowa State, 73rd in offense. And all these teams, they're really low in the one aspect, but they're really highly rated in the other. Uh, Rutgers, 115th offensively, but they're 4th defensively. Baylor, 104th defensively. Xavier, 89th defensively. Ohio State, 94th defensively. Uh, Auburn, 59th offensively. Arizona, 87th defensively. Boise State, 87th offensively. UNC, 65th defensively. Uh, TCU, 69th offensively. San Diego State, 66th offensively. Providence, 59th defensively. Ohio... Iowa, 120th defensively. Kentucky, 70th defensively. You got to get a well-rounded team to win in March. The team that I'm going to pick to win it all is not going to be one of those teams. You got to be well-rounded. Here's a well-rounded team, Texas. Very well-rounded team. They they contribute on both sides of the ball. UNC, Nevada. I have confidence UNC is going to 
be fine in March. Like, what? They were... I don't know. Here's the thing. The problem with UNC is they have a lot of great players. They just don't play as a team very well. But, like, come March, they, they played in a team great last year. So, I don't know. They're still a good team. Nevada's been pro propping up there in the rankings. They're, good, they're still a good team. Arizona, Toledo. I am taking... Uh, I'm taking Arizona. Kansas State. Uh, yeah, they're a real good team. They're they're good, man. I, I'm gonna take them. NC State, Iowa. <sighs> Iowa is so streaky, dude. They're the streakiest team out there. They either just go on these massive runs where you can't beat them, or they just are so bad on defense they're just allowing points after points. I'm gonna take the more well-rounded team at NC State. <sighs> I'm taking VCU. I'm sorry. If you lose to Loyola Marymount, I'm not picking you to beat a 12 seed. Sorry. Sorry. Play better, Gonzaga. And I'm going to take Laura Roberts. Sorry, if you lose to DePaul, I'm not. Like, here's the thing about IU. They haven't lost to a bad team yet. Like, all the teams they've lost to are in the tournament. Northwestern's in there. Iowa's in there. Penn State's in there. Um, Arizona's in there. Kansas is in there. But, like, these teams... You're out here losing to DePaul. You're out here losing to Loyola Marymount. Uh, it's like, you are out here losing to, I, to like, LSU. Like, that's the, uh, just some food for thought. Max A. Smith is a senior, and he is out for another March run. I'm just going to say that. Wisconsin, Virginia Tech. When I watched Wisconsin play, to, play IU, they did not look great, but I know they're still a good team, and I'm going to take them over Virginia Tech. TCU. When they, I think when when TCU is on, they're on. They're a veteran team. Uh, they lost some games earlier in the year, but I mean, I had them like making the elite eight in the preseason, and they're they're getting propped up there now in the rankings. They're good when they're on. FAU, show some respect to the Owls of FAU. They've only lost one game this whole year. It was the second game of the year to Ole Miss. They beat Bryant, Detroit, Mercy, Albany, South Alabama, beat Florida. And they haven't lost since then. And they really haven't had very many close games. They beat UAB by two. UAB is a real good team. And they needed overtime to beat FIU, but that's a rivalry game. And, I mean, they just haven't lost. So, I'm going to take them over Clemson. I really don't think Clemson's that great. I mean, like, they have the win over Duke. But, I mean, I, uh, they're 24. They really shouldn't be. They lost to Wake Forest. I mean, eh. they got trashed by Loyola Chicago earlier in the year. I just don't see the. I, they lost to Iowa. I don't. I don't see the Clemson hype. I'm sorry, and I will take Houston over uh, over Liberty. I, I just don't see the Clemson hype. I, I'm sorry. Next, I'm taking Purdue over uh, over Mizzou. I am taking. Mm, <laughs> I don't know about this game. I don't know about this game. St. Mary's, you know, I saw them in the tournament last year against IU, and they were really, really good. Um, their defense is spectacular, and their offense is enough. To, I don't know. Baylor's 104th in defense. If Baylor's 104th in defense, that means they're going to give up points to maybe a not great offensive. Like, St. Mary's is real good on defense, and they're like, I don't know. I, I like St. Mary's. I'm, I'm going to say they're, they're a little bit more well-rounded. Um, I don't know. That's real tough for me. Both those teams are very talented. Marquette, ooh. Number one defense, or they're usually the number one defense. I don't know if they're statistically. Versus number one offense in Marquette. Hmm. I don't know. Marquette scores a lot of points, but defense wins championships. D defense wins championships. I'm going to take Kansas. And I definitely think Kansas will beat Charleston. The, th the thing that makes Charleston dangerous is they play as a team, they pass the ball a lot, and they shoot the three well. They have a fire offense that just has sharp shooters everywhere. And their defense is not terrible either. But I think Kansas would just have too many. They would just have the better athletes. That's just a fact. I'm taking Bama over Wake Forest. And I'm going to take either Pitt or Ohio. See, Pitt or Ohio State are one of – there's always that team – that like barely sneaks in to the tournament. They they like they barely sneak in, and then they go on a run. And I feel like that could be Pitt or Ohio State. They're just that kind of style of team. So I'm gonna take them. 
taking Miami, obviously. And then Duke UCLA second round. Imagine the views that game would get. Uh, UCLA is definitely better though, so I will take them. But that would be a fun game to watch in the second round. I am taking Tennessee over Illinois. Tennessee, great team. As well, mm, these are two teams that are hot right now. Indiana and Iowa State. I'll get. I'll give you a funny thing. From, from December, I, I think it's from December first to or no, I don't know. I think it was from like December fifteenth to January like seventh. IU was the ninety seventh best team in the country. Their last three games where they trashed Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan State. In that span, they were the third best team in the country based on efficiency. They've turned it around. They are a legit team. They are the team that we thought they were in the preseason, which was a good team and a Final Four contender. I'm taking... I'm going to take Rutgers just because of the strong defense. Um, they're a good team. They're a good team. I know I was talking about well-rounded, but like... I'm talking about, like, to win the whole thing. And I'm going to take UNC over Arizona just because they have that tournament potential. And Arizona, I don't know. I got really concerned with those losses to Oregon and Washington State. I was concerned by that. I'm going to take UNC. I mean, I can't have no upsets. Come on now. I'm taking Kansas State over NC State, although that would be a good game. NC State does have a, does have a good team. I'll take, uh, you know what? We'll take Oral Roberts. They're 17 of four right now. They're they're coming back for a vengeance. I'm telling you right now. I will take TCU, obviously, and I I will be taking Houston. I will be taking Houston. I know they lost to Temple, but I will take Houston. Um, okay. I'm gonna all right. I'm gonna mess around with the regions. If Purdue was the one seed here, that would be the Midwest. So, I'm going to have Purdue be Midwest. By the way, the region is only really based on where, like, the top team is. So, like, Purdue would be Midwest. Tennessee would be South. Um, I guess... I guess Bama would be East. I guess Bama would be East and Kansas State would be stuck in the West. I don't know really how that would work, but... I think that... Purdue Midwest, Tennessee South... Bama East and Kansas State West. That's, I guess, how that would work out. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Let's go to the Elite Eight. Uh, I'm taking St. Mary's. And the reason is, is I think Purdue would struggle against a really good defensive team. Because here's what would happen. They would double team Edie and have three guys play the rest of the court. And St. Mary's is really good on defense. I think it would be it, it would be it'd be hard to get their offense going because they're so one dimensional. They're not really one dimensional, but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think St. Mary's would beat them. I'm sorry. I maybe it's just my Purdue hatred coming out. And uh, I'm gonna take Virginia. Kansas has lost three in a row, um, which I think that's all they haven't done in like a really long time. Let lose three in a row. Um, I still think they're a great team, but. I'm going to take Virginia just because of the recency. I will be taking Alabama over uh, Pitt and over the winner of Pitt and Ohio State. And then I'll take UCLA over Miami. Real good game, though. Real good game. And then uh, I'll take I'll take UNC over Rutgers. I think they're better. And then I'm going to take... Sue me, I'm taking IU. Sorry. Hey, over the last two weeks, I've been the third best team in the country. I'm I, I'm just saying. TJD's I just scoring 35 a game. Sorry. Sue me if you must. Okay, Kansas is beating Oral Roberts. And then... See, this is tough. I think these teams are really close skill-wise. Skill-wise, I don't really know who's better. 
Two Texas teams. Oh, they're both real good. Houston is the number one team in the country in efficiency differential. They are. They just are. Um, like they had a even with their 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 losing to Temple, they're still number one in efficiency margin. So I'm still gonna take Houston. I think if Houston gets Houston's the type of team where I think they will play well against the top competition. If if they don't overlook a team, they're gonna play well. That's just what I'm gonna bank. Final four. Okay, St. Mary's, Virginia. That game might not get over 40 points with the defense they play. Um, uh, I'm going to take... Uh, I don't think St. Mary's is good enough to go to the final four. I'm going to take Virginia. Um, Bama and UCLA. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Those Those teams are good. Those teams are really good. I think UCLA is more well-rounded. I don't know how good Bama is on defense. Their offense is great. They score a lot of points. Like, they're dro they'll, they'll drop 106 if they feel like it. But their defense is something that, I don't know. They, see, this in Janu their January point allowed totals, 62, 52, 69, 66, 66, 64. Maybe their defense is turning up. I don't know. And then you look at UCLA. Okay, UCLA's defense might be better. Listen to UCLA's defensive points allowed numbers. 49, 58, 49, 54, 62, 58. Ah, oh, man. I'm going to take UCLA. Close, real close. I, I don't know. That game would be real close. I'm going to take UCLA. I, oh, that was tough. But I do think UCLA is a little bit better if I had to, if I had to pick. Um, which I do. I have to pick. So that puts us at... I'm pretty sure Virginia played UCLA earlier in the year. If I'm not... No, UCLA lost to Illinois and Baylor. I'm talking about that little mini tournament they had. Which, uh, which Virginia actually won. But UCLA didn't get to play them. IU UNC. Hmm. <laughs> I know I always talk about the oh if they played a second time, then the team that lost the first time would win. Nah. They're the th a third in efficiency this past two weeks. That's all I'm gonna say. Third in efficiency the last two weeks. Um you can call this a bias pick all you want, but the I the IU team I've seen play these past these past three games is a top five team in the country. That's how well they've been playing. That's seriously how well they've been playing. They got to keep it up, but that's how well they've been playing. And then who else? Oh, Kansas and Houston. Huh. Ah, this is also hard. I'm not messing with Kansas State right now. They're hot as hell. They are hot as hell. State. Cats. Final four. The only thing maybe is, I don't know if they have the coaching, because Bruce Weber left and, like, they have a newer kind of coach. I don't remember his name, but... What the hell is this final four? Oh, my God. What the hell? What the hell is this final four? Oh, God. I told you, literally any team one through five could win it. In my opinion, any team seated one th one through six, any team seated one through six can can win it all, and I'd be like, ah, oh, that's reasonable. <sighs> Ugh, Virginia, UCLA. Ah, I'm gonna take UCLA because I feel like the defense is more on par than people would think. Like, oh, Virginia's much better on defense. UCLA had some pretty low points allowed totals. Um, okay, Penn State, or Rutgers just beat Penn State 65-45. Um, okay. How, oh, these are two of the hottest. Ah, I can't have IU going all the way to the final. I just can't. I, I'm going to get screamed at. I'm going to take Kansas State. I mean, Kansas State, they've just been playing really well, man. They've just been playing really well. I don't know what to say. Their defense is... 
I don't think as great as some of these other teams, but I mean they can score. They're they're a great team. Um, their efficiency numbers might not be the best. I, I I forget where they were on Ken Palm. Let me see where were they at on Ken Palm. I'm gonna look. Okay, Ken Palm efficiency, Kansas State is 26. But they're 33 in offense, 34. They're well-rounded. I'm taking Kansas State. Championship. UCLA is fourth in efficiency. They're third in defense, 26. Yeah, they're third in defense. Where's Virginia in defense? Where? Okay, St. Mary's is six in defense. Where the hell is Virginia? Virginia is actually 19th in offense, 25th in defense. I don't know. Uh, when when it comes to the numbers, UCLA is just the efficiency numbers don't lie. They're third in defense and they can score when they need to. I'm gonna take UCLA to win the national title. That's my pick. Like I said, this is a mess, dude. Any of these, literally any of these teams could win it. Any, they, any of them could win it. Um. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take UCLA, um, but uh, I hope y'all enjoyed. That's my bracket. Um, let me know if you disagree or not. I'm going to try my damnedest to get bracketology out weekly. I I want to. Um, I'm going to aim for that. I feel like I took too much recency bias. Like I kind of took who's hot and who's not. Um, but I mean, I, I guess I've got to count for some. We'll see. I love y'all. I'll see you later. Go Hoosiers.